This is called Crossing the Rubicon, or an essay on what I did last Saturday. When people show you who they are, trust them the first time, my best friend tells me, as though she's not told me 47 times before. But this time, it's different. She says it like the words are catching on her teeth between the incisors and canines, like she can't quite unravel them clearly. She says it quietly in the sleeplessness of 4 a.m., says it with the delicacy of a panther stepping between trees. She knows you. The first time she tells you this, you are at the cottage, not at the cottage, not with her, but stuck there. You're at the cottage and she tells you it coldly, brutally, an industrial worker handling the tiniest china vase. She's standing in front of you and you're in the cottage and she is not, she's just in front of you and she does not turn around. She knows you, he knows you. He speaks like he knows the words are catching on his teeth, wrapped tight around his molars, like you're pulling them off of his tongue. He speaks like he speaks. No, no, he doesn't get to speak. He doesn't. When people show you who they are, trust them the first time. My best friend tells me this 48 times quietly in the sleeplessness of 4 a.m. with the poise and dignity of a wild animal. She tells me this on the couch in her basement, but it is not her basement. It is not. It is his couch, his bed, the bathroom that connects through two doors. I am not with her in her basement. She speaks like an industrial worker handling the tiniest china vase for just one flower, just one and it finds you, it finds you in the sleeplessness at any a.m. It finds you when you are not at the cottage. It finds you in the way he puts his arm around you, but it isn't the right hand, the right cottage. You can't sleep, you can't wake up, speak up. He speaks like he knows what you want to hear and he does, he does. You are not at the cottage, you are not on his couch, you are not in his basement, you are not his. But I, see, I, like Beethoven, I like to hear the bow of the violin cut into the string. I love the violin, I love the music, everything I just, I can't, <coughs> can't touch the bow of the violin cut into the string with this huge industrial snapping sound. I keep hearing this huge industrial snapping sound 47, 48 times. Stop, she says. Stop, you are not at the cottage. We went over photographs, black and white snapshots, the faces radiant with goodness at the cottage with the gorgeous mountains and the photographs pinned up at some time before our death. Stop, and I wake up shivering on the cold square tile of the bathroom that connects through two doors and I hear that sound again that huge industrial sound of the tiniest china vase shattering on the tiles I hear my friend and she's screaming she screams when people show you who they are she whispers trust them the first time she's not at the cottage she can't be at the cottage she's just in front of you I love the violin I love the dancers the music everything I touch everything I see the bow of the violin cuts through the sound and I see I see him, I reach out, I can't touch him. He's in front of me, I'm not his. Stop. Trust him the first time. Some part of me, I think, will always live at the cottage. Some part of me will never forget him, but I'm not his. He opens his mouth, and there's this huge industrial snapping sound and the cracking of China, and then nothing. He does not speak, does not know what to say. There are no words, just a long string wrapped tight around his molars. We'll go back to lying again, darling, as if it never happened. We'll pretend that it never happened. Tomorrow, home. My room. My bed. Sleep. Violence. Music. Beethoven. When people show you who they are, believe them. Believe him. Cut the strings.